guys, how's it going? Alex Scott here with Concertini.com. Thank you so much for checking out another one of our super cool studio gear reviews. Today I am reviewing a piece of software that I use pretty frequently. This is Guitar Pro 7, or 7.5 to be exact, the latest build. Now Guitar Pro is a really, really fantastic piece of notation and tablature software that is particularly geared towards guitar players and bass players, or really just anybody who is working with more modern styles of music. Now, there's a lot of scoring programs out there, but a lot of them are really designed for orchestral scoring, right? So working with strings, cellos, violins, woodwinds, brass, all that kind of stuff, doing really proper orchestral scoring. That's really what their tool sets are designed for, and that's great. They're wonderful programs if that's what you're trying to do. However, Guitar Pro, as it's kind of implied in the name, is much more designed for guitarists and guys who are just trying to do either tabs or write out scores for or more modern kind of rock and blues and country and all that kind of stuff. So I just want to go over some of the basic features real quick, show you around the kind of basic parts of the program. Uh, I use it for namely educational purposes, right? So if I'm ever teaching lessons, you know, I'm a bass player and do all kinds of stuff. Um, I've done a lot of education for a few different websites here on Concertini included. Um, but it's a great solution for when I need to either write out specific parts or write out charts that I'm going to use to work with students. It's also really, really great if I need to write out charts for gigs or if I have a song idea or a composition that I've made and I want to share it with other musicians, um, it's excellent for that as well. You know, it's really just a great all-around notation solution if you need to do notation or tablature. So when you very first open the program, this is what you are going to see. It's very, very simple. What it does, it does incredibly well. It doesn't really have a ton of bells and whistles that you don't need, but it does have some very, very cool features and when you really dive into it, you can get incredibly detailed with what you're able to do. So very, very cool from that aspect. But we'll go ahead and just do a new file here so I can kind of show you guys how we get something set up. Now, as soon as you click new and you come in to setting up your very first score, you are presented with the add track page. And this is obviously where you're going to start to add any instruments that you want to include in your score. And right off the bat, I love everything that you're able to do in this software when it comes to notation and how easily it's all laid out. So obviously if you're a guitar player and you're going to be using this mainly just for guitar, you're going to be good to go right off the bat. You can pick acoustic, electric, bass, other, in case you need to do uke or banjo or mandolin or anything like that. Uh, but even within this, you have a lot of options as to the sounds. That's the other really cool feature here is that it includes a massive library of really high quality MIDI sounds that will play your scores back so you can make sure that you've got everything correct. And it's also really useful for demoing stuff. So if you are writing a full score for a band that has bass, guitar, and drums in it, and you actually score all of those out, there are some really, really great sounds that will be able to just demo the song for you. You don't even have to record anything. It'll just play it back. And that's one of my favorite features. Great for educators. Uh, if you are writing out an exercise or something and you don't necessarily have the time to sit down and like record yourself playing it, but you just need to get the point across, whether it be scales or a particular chord progression or something like that, all of that is in here and easily accessible. So even just for acoustic, we have all these different options, blues, chorus, fingers, radio, steel blues, you know, a bunch of different kind of signature sounds, quote unquote. Same thing for electric guitar. We've got a ton of different sounds in here for electric guitar, bass, all of it. So you also have some options of what kind of notation you'd like to set up. So obviously you can name your track here, set color and all this kind of stuff. Um, but then you are given three different options for notation here. You can do tablature, standard notation, or slash notation, which is really cool if you just need to do lead sheets, right? So you don't need to write out any notes, you just need to do chord changes. You can just grab slash notation, do basic single line rhythmic stuff, and then lay the chords over on top of it. But for now, I will just kind of do the standard default, which is both standard notation and tablature. So once we create that, Obviously, you can see we have a lot of our kind of typical, what we would expect, you have tempo marking, tuning marking, all this stuff, treble clef, etc. But another really great thing here is that no matter where you input notes, like if we just put a three here, it's going to show up in both places. You don't have to do your tablature and your standard notation separately, which is really, really handy. So also vice versa, if we just go up here to our normal staff and add a quarter note somewhere, 
it's going to automatically generate a fret for that. Now, this can get a little bit tricky if you're working strictly with the standard notation and allowing it to generate tab beneath that because it doesn't always get the finger patterns 100% correct, but it's really nice that it automatically populates between each thing. So very, very handy there. Now, of course, you can customize everything about how this is laid out, you know, in terms of adding additional markings, and that's really where this gets kind of crazy in terms of this being really designed for guitar players because the number of options that you have in terms of notation, I mean, you can do slaps and pops for bass, you can do left hand tapping, you can do dead notes, palm mute on the note, palm mute on the beat, pick scrapes, natural and artificial harmonics, downstrokes, upstrokes, arpeggiated stuff. I mean, it just goes, out. I mean, even wah open and close, you can actually notate effects into this, which is kind of crazy to me. Vibrato, tremolo, vibrato with tremolo bar, you know, I mean, it, it, it's really amazing how deep they allow you to go, and they've really thought out how guitar players actually play, and it lets you notate all of that, which is incredibly cool. Of course, there's a ton of section organization features, you know, in terms of laying out your whole score, you can do all of the normal things that you would expect in a, core, in a score in terms of uh, doing codas and DS and all of that kind of stuff. Um, but it's really the main thing that I love is just how many options there are for notating different techniques on guitar. It's really, really cool. Now, of course, there's tons of transposition features as well in case you need to put things into different keys. It's a really, really excellent chord system as well, which is really nice. So you just hit the letter A on your typing keyboard and you can pull up chords and it actually allows you to build the chord in a few different ways. You can either do it here on the fretboard Right, so whatever your shape may be, you can lay it out and it will automatically figure out what chord that is. Alternatively, like let's just say we want to do a C major add nine. It's going to give you all of these different ways that you can fret a C major add nine. So not only can it can you tell it exactly what chord you want to play, no matter how many extensions or crazy, you know, split voicings or whatever you're doing, inversions. All that's fine, but it'll actually, it has all of the common and even some very uncommon shapes for your fretboard, and you can pick and choose between them and find exactly the one that you want to notate. And then it'll, of course, you can pull that information out as well and, and notate out the chord. It's just very, very cool. You know, it's definitely designed in such a way that guitar players will really be able to, to understand it very, very quickly and notate exactly what they need to notate with very little effort. And that's what I love it for. You know, again, for educators and really anything in that realm where you need to get really specific things across, it's incredibly powerful. So moving on from there, there's also some really cool stuff in terms of your ability to alter what's going on with the sounds. You know, again, it has this massive library of MIDI sounds that'll play your scores back for you. Like I said at the beginning, that's great for just checking your part, making sure that everything is correct. But beyond that, you can actually do a whole bunch of really cool stuff to make it sound more convincing and more authentic. So you can use this to kind of kill two birds with one stone. You can use it to write out your track and notate everything that you need notated, but you can also use it to kind of generate basic demos of tunes and hear ideas with some really, really nice sounds. So that has this whole kind of mixer section, and it's not laid out like a traditional mixer in a DAW, but they've laid it out really, really nicely for somebody who doesn't necessarily do a ton of mixing in a DAW. You know, it's not how I think of a mixer, but for somebody who doesn't work in mixing like I do, it's a great solution. So you just come down here to your list of tracks, double click, and it's gonna pull up this little information panel. And then from here, you can change the sound, of course, if you need to, and it's got all those same options that we saw when we were setting up the track. But it also has this whole little effect chain, and it actually has quite a few different options for effects, and they're all built around effects the guitar players would use. So you've got, these are all sort of pedal-based effects. You can see there's, you know, distortion, rat, disto plus, you know, all this kind of stuff. I'm sure you guys know what it's all getting at there. Phase 90, you know, all this kind of stuff. So you'll recognize a lot of, of these effects in here, but then it also does have some studio stuff down at the bottom here. Dynamics, we've got a few different kind of vintage style compressors. 
graphic EQs, a few very nice sounding reverb options. So it really lets you tailor the sounds that it's using to play back to sound a little bit more authentic. And I know guys who, you know, when they're sitting down and writing, they'll come up with something on guitar, notate it out in Guitar Pro, and then also on top of that, use Guitar Pro. You, you can fly in, of course, MIDI data and stuff to set up a drum groove. You don't have to sit there and actually notate it out. You can just fly in a MIDI file of a drum groove that you like, a couple fills, whatever arrange the whole thing out and you have a whole arrangement view that starts to populate down here as you you know add on bars and all this stuff you can see if i just generate a bunch of bars in free space we have this whole arrangement view that starts to pop up and you can navigate through it that way which is very very handy all of your sections will show up down here as well which makes everything very easy to navigate but you can fly in you can write out a bass part write out a keys part fly in some some midi data for drums and build a whole score that will then you can just export as an audio file. So if you are writing a tune that you need to send to your band and you have maybe a groove in mind that you think would sound really cool with it or really whatever, you can use Guitar Pro as a one-stop shop solution to create a whole demo of that tune, send it out to people, they can learn the parts or write parts of their own. You can of course go in and mute um, different stuff, you know, if you want to create a version without drums or a version without your guitar part, you know, again, if you're an educator and you're creating scores and tunes and ideas and exercises and stuff for your students, you can set up a drum loop, a bass thing on top of it, and then your guitar parts send them versions with and without the guitar. Or if you're teaching bass students, send them versions with and without the bass part so that they can learn it and play along with the actual file, and then they'll have an option to play along with that removed so that they can you know work on it on their own it's just it's very very well thought out now my only complaint about guitar pro 7 uh, and this is you know i've been using guitar pro for a couple of years now the first version i used i think was five uh worked for in six for a long time and then now in seven it can get a little bit buggy sometimes there's a few really minor little things that don't work you know it, i don't even want to like get into technical specifics of them because they're all pretty minor but like just as one example you know if i go in here and i add a chord right let's just, whatever just the c major and i have something notated here that's in the key of c you know whatever just a simple little little c major arpeggio i can select that and i can transpose it by going up to tools transpose and I can say whatever, if I want it to be in the key of D, it automatically does everything for me. You know, it moves all the notation up, it moves the fingering up in a, you know, basically the same fretboard pattern that I used. You know, I started on third fret A string, now it's on fifth fret A string. All that's fine. However, it doesn't transpose the chord marking. Simple little stuff like that, and there's there's a few things going through it. Also, the, the bar organization is a little bit funky. Like, you can see it's laying out three bar things here, and they're all different sizes. You can definitely fix that. We just go in here and you go bar, you go down to system, layout, fixed bar count, same size for all bars, blah, 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 and that will force it into, you know, kind of more of a tr traditional four bar scheme where all the bars are the same size. You can also go into this design mode here, which you just hit command alt D, and it will allow you to drag your bars around a free space in case you have like a bunch of quarter notes and then one bar with 16th notes, you need to make that bar bigger. That's all fine and dandy, but it's just kind of frustrating to me that it's it's difficult to get it to set up kind of a standard bar size. I like my bars when I notate things out to be really nice and even. I think it makes things easier to read, especially if I'm doing like notation exercises for students that I'm working with. You know, if I'm just going to have a whole page of quarter notes that they're, you know, either doing walking bass lines or doing arpeggios or something, I just want them all the same size. And it's odd to me that it doesn't default to that. And it instead defaults to these weird groupings of three bars and all the bars end up different sizes. If you don't pay attention to that, you can end up with some odd things happening in odd places. But, you know, these are minor issues. They're easy things to work around. The transposition thing, I do kind of wish that the guys at Arobus, the company that, that makes Guitar Pro, I wish they would go in and, and tweak that and have the chords transpose with everything else. It would make my life a little bit easier with some of the educational stuff that I do. But regardless, you know, again, minor gripes. Overall, it's really, really powerful software. I love how directly geared towards guitarists it is. You know, again, with all the different options that you have for guitar notation, it's very, very cool. They've included a really powerful sound engine in it, which makes, you know, again, doing anything like demoing 
anything like that. It, it's really, really nice and it's incredibly effective, incredibly easy to use, incredibly fast. So overall, I think it's a very cool piece of software. I think if you find yourself doing notation or tablature with any kind of frequency, I think it's a great great option. It's also really, really affordable. Um, I think the full version of the program is right around $100. We'll stick a link down in the description um, where you guys can check the current price of it. I'm not 100% sure because I got a license years ago. But in any case, I really, really like it. I think it's a great solution for this kind of a thing. It sounds like something you guys would be into. I recommend checking it out. But what do you guys think? Do you like Guitar Pro 7? Do you use Sibelius or any of the other well-known notation pieces of software on the market? Whatever your thoughts may be, definitely let me know in the comments down below. If you have not yet subscribed to Concertini, please do that as well. It helps us out a ton. Be sure to click that notification bell to be kept up to date with our newest videos. And if you want to give this video a like or a share, that is much appreciated as well. But regardless, my name is Alex Scott with Concertini.com. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.